Hey everyone, it's Jeff, and the NBA topic I wanted to discuss today was Damian Lillard and Portland Trailblazers, who I feel like Lillard right now is somehow being slept on again, and the overall season he's having is being slept on, which is pretty odd to say considering he's probably like one of the most 10 most famous NBA players right now. But I just feel like we're taking him for granted in the same way we've taken LeBron James and Kevin Durant for granted. And obviously it's a different scale, of course, because LeBron and KD are better than Lillard. But I feel like we just constantly always assume the Blazers and Lillard are going to be good without ever questioning just how much, how difficult it is for them to be good right now, considering they're missing both McCollum and Nurkic. Like, I feel like a lot of people don't appreciate the consistency of the Blazers because they're probably going to have the longest playoff streak in the NBA right now. I think the Rockets own it, but because the Rockets are probably going to miss it this year, it's going to go to the Blazers who are second. And it's going to be like their 8th or ninth season in a row in the postseason. And I say Lillard is disrespected because I checked the NBA.com's recent MVP ladder, and he was 5th. He was behind Embiid, LeBron, Stefan, Jokic. And I get that Embiid is 1st, of course. But I really do think Lillard has a very strong case to be 2nd right now. And when they replaced LeBron James 2nd, there was an outrage on social media over why Steph or Jokic should be 2nd instead. And I get that, I totally get that. I'm not saying Lillard should be consensus over those guys. But I was just surprised at how little people were, you know, angry or pissed off that Lillard wasn't second or third or fourth. Because I don't think there's a big gap or divide between Jokic and Steph and Lillard this season, considering the fact that Lillard is averaging 38 and 4, and he's shooting 61.4% true shooting, which is, like, league average last year was... 56.3%. So he's well above that. He's a very efficient scorer and he's averaging close to 30 points a game. And the Blazers have a better record than the Nuggets and the Warriors. And yet he's just, he's behind both of them. And I'm not trying to crap on Steph or Jokic. I'm just trying to point out that it doesn't make sense to me why Lillard is so disrespected in the MVP race because he's literally defining the definition of MVP, like of most valuable. And I get like, you know, being valuable isn't the only narrative in the race and it's never been, but that's the narrative behind Steph right now, right? And I feel like it applies to Lillard just as much and perhaps even more because like I said, he's missing McCollum and Nurkic, who are two of the three best players on this team right now, and yet they've won three in a row. They're 21 and I think 21 and 14, which is fifth in the West and I believe eighth overall in the league. And I don't mean to crap on Steph, or Steph and um, Jokic again. But he's got a worse roster than either of them. Because Gary Trent right now is the second option. And Gary Trent has played very well so far to, you know, make up for McCollum's absence. And by the way, like, I know some non-Blazers fans think the Blazers should trade McCollum because Trent can, like, replace 80% of what McCollum can do. And I feel like if you believe in that, you should probably familiarize yourself with the whole, like, Portland culture, like, city, whatever. Because CJ and McCollum are two really important figures in, like, Portland sports. And I feel like to them, they would rather win with McCollum and Lillard than trade McCollum and win without him. Like, would you swap your best friend for someone who's better than him just to, like, win your high school championship or whatever? And I know it's, like, not the same thing, but I hope you understand the point I'm trying to make. It would be a very callous thing to do. But anyways, back to, like, Gary Trent, the second option. Like, so Gary Trent, Robert Covington, Carmelo Anthony, and his canter, they're not the same level of supporting cast as... Say Jamal Murray plus Will Barton plus Gary Harris, Michael Porter Jr., or Kelly Oubre, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green. Robert Covington has been one of the worst offensive players I've ever witnessed this season. He's, you know, his efficiency is awful, and I get his, like, the defense is why he's there. But the Blazers are 28th in defense, okay? It's because they're 7th in offense. And they're not 7th in offense because of Robert Covington's contributions, okay? Because he's just been terrible on offense this season. Tonight against Sacramento, he had the same amount of turnovers as shots made. I'm pretty sure, at least it was true until like the last 3 or 4 minutes. Carmelo Anthony and his cancer, they're both lucky the Blazers are just leaning completely into offense because they pretty much bleed as many points as they contribute on offense, but because the Blazers are just punting on defense anyways, there it's like, it's okay. They both played really well tonight against Sacramento, but my point is Lillard is the one who's holding them together. And here's a fun fact. So the Blazers have been in 18 close games this year, and 19 if you count tonight's game against Sacramento, but the stats haven't updated yet, so I'm not going to include that. And of those 18 games, the Blazers have won 72.2% of them, and that's second in the entire league. 
and Lillard is statistically by far the clutchest player in the entire NBA right now. And he's second in the league's um, total like clutch points scored. And by the way, clutch is defined as I'm pretty sure it's within five points, last five minutes of the game. That's how NBA.com does it at least. And the only reason why Lillard isn't first is because Zach Levine has played in four more games this season. And Levine is shooting 41.2% from the field in those situations. Whereas Lillard is shooting 61.2%. Do you want to know how many other guys in the top 33 shoot that? Zero. And Bam is the only one that's close, and he's number 34. And he's shooting 61.1%. And he's a big man. And big men are supposed to shoot, like, high percentages. And I didn't watch yesterday's game against the Warriors, but I heard Lillard came back at the end and just closed him out. And tonight against Sacramento, like, oh, oh boy, like, he definitely closed them out. They were trailing five at, like, some point in the second half. And they were like deadlocked with the Kings until like halfway through the fourth quarter. And last, not halfway, like last like three minutes, I would say, three or four minutes. Lillard just came alive. And he just, he was just unstoppable. He was getting to the basket and just dropping it off the canter or just finishing a really tough shot. He was nailing deep three pointers, contested three pointers. And he put the Kings away like almost single handedly on offense. And shout out to Cantor for helping him out a little bit there at the end. But. It was really just Lillard driving their entire offense at the end. And I just don't get why there's like such a big consensus divide between Jokic and Steph, who are kind of like the, you know, the two guys who are like neck and neck in most people's eyes, and then Lillard, because he has a better record in them, and he has a worse roster than them, and he still has the numbers too. And like, I'm not saying he should be for sure ahead of them, because the Nuggets have pretty much the same exact record as the Blazers. They just lost one more game. And Jokic is, you know, pretty much averaging a triple-double. So yeah, it makes sense why Jokic should be, like, second or third. And Steph has just been, like, crazy efficient from the field this year. Like, he's averaging 30 points per game, and he's shooting something like 47% from the field and, like, 43% from three, which comes out to, like, 64% sure shooting. So I'm not saying, like, Lillard should be consensus ahead of those guys. But my point is they're on the same level. And I just feel like we just assume that the Blazers are going to be good. And we're not appreciating the level of difficulty that Lillard, Lillard is going through right now to keep them afloat. Like Luka is in kind of a similar situation in Dallas. And they just barely got into the 8th seed right now. Whereas Lillard has his team like in the top 5. So yeah, um, in conclusion, I feel like Lillard is somehow underappreciated. Despite being a very popular name. Just because we're just kind of taking for granted what he's doing every single night. And just not really appreciating it because we're like, oh, that's just Damian Lillard. He just does that. And it's not like he's LeBron James who's won like four MVPs already. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.